Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest, I'm really excited about coming to us all the way, I believe, from Asia. But yeah, before but before I talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from ScottTodd.net, LandMoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, PostingDomination.com forward slash the Land Geek. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Scott, can you hear me? You kind of froze up there. What? This is interesting. Mark, Mark, you there? Yeah, yeah you froze going on me. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. That was weird. How's it going, man? It's good. It's good. Um, are you ready for a guest? I am. Yep. Let's get going. All right. So if you don't know Johnny FD from johnnyfd.com, he was born as Johnny Jen in San Francisco. Um, and he started traveling around the world from Australia, Borneo, all across Southeast Asia to the Caribbean, working as a dive master and scuba instructor. But in 2011, decided to focus on his second found passion, Muay Thai kickboxing. After six professional fights and years of living as cheaply as possible, he turned 30 and realized he couldn't even afford a plane ticket home if he wanted to. And then he started blogging. And, you know, from there, Johnny FD, I'm going to let you take it from there. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks so much. It's, it's really exciting to be here. And what's really funny is I'm in Sri Lanka right now. So exact opposite time zone. And that background, the beach that you have right now, is exactly what's right behind me if this was during the day. No kidding. So, oh, yeah. so Johnny, you're, you're just like a professional blogger, traveler. What do, what, give us, what, what do you, how do I even characterize you? How do I label you? Yeah. Yeah, it's always complicated. I mean, now I'm living off of passive income, which we can get into a little bit later. But my my life has been really been a series of trial and error, you know, trying to figure out uh, college and then career, corporations, moving to Thailand, doing the scuba diving thing, doing the Muay Thai thing. And then just, you know, dipping my toes into uh, Kindle publishing, writing, writing books, like travel guides getting into e-commerce and drop shipping, getting into a bit of um, investing. And now I think I have 14 different streams of passive income. And that allows me to be able to travel and work in places like Sri Lanka, which you know, you know, I'm sure a lot of people uh, would love to be, to be at, just to go surfing or just go hang out. Yeah, so you are the, the like, like, you're like the human example of what I think most of us want to be. We all want to do what we want, when we want, where we want, with whom we want. And yet we don't want to have to go to a job, put on mm -hmm. a tie and a suit, report to someone. And so you kind of cracked that code and started creating these passive income streams so you could live exactly the intentional way you wanted to. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. And and I'm very, very lucky that I kind of fast tracked to that because I think that if I never had the opportunity to work at a big American corporation, I worked for Honeywell right after school and I had, you know, the shirt and tie, the cubicle, the, the Lexus sedan, I'm seeing clients all the time and the, and the corporate card. If I didn't have that for a few years, I don't think I would have had the guts to say what else is there because I would have worked my whole life just to get to that point. And I think for a lot of people, you know, their first goal is to move somewhere like California. You know, if you grew up in the Midwest, you're like, okay, well, you know, one day I'm going to move to California to New York. But because I had already grown up there and, and I basically had everything that I was supposed to have, good university degree, good, uh, good job at a good corporation. And I still wasn't happy. And that's when I realized there has to be more. And that's when I first moved to Thailand and I thought, Hey, let's give this a shot. I have nothing to lose. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about happiness. Mm -hmm. What in your life right now truly makes you happy? Oh, everything. I mean, the fact that I'm it's right now uh end of February and I'm not cold. It's if anything, it's a bit too warm sometimes. I, I hate the winter. Uh even in San Francisco, 
which most people listening are thinking California is not that cold. But when you grow up in a house without insulation, without heating, and you know it's still in the 40s, it, it, you're freezing. And I hated the winter, and I just wanted to be able to escape that. Uh, now, you know, I wake up every day. It's you know it's a sunny 85 or 90. I walk right across the street to the beach, and it's a beautiful surf beach with uh, board rentals right on the beach for a dollar fifty an hour. So I just <laughs> I I show up without anything. I, I literally just put on my board shorts. I walk across the street. I rent a board for $1.50. I surf for an hour in the morning. And I actually remember this morning thinking, if n I don't do anything else, I've already accomplished everything I need. You know, I got some exercise. I got some sun. I, uh, I got to work on a skill and I got to spend time with friends and be out in nature. I'm good. And this is only 9 a.m. <laughs> And from that point on, the rest of the day is, is a bonus for me. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You know, man, here's the thing is like Johnny's living the dream that, you know, like you and I, we will we'll debate back and forth. Right. Like, I mean, we, we could do this, Mark, like you and I are in a situation we could go and do this. I, I don't think so, because we've got wives and kids. But we've that's got, what I was going to say. Other like, people that we have to like drag along with our dream. Okay, but see, like, here's the thing, like, uh, okay, so like, both my kids and like, you have a third child. So like, you're, you're a little bit below me, but like, in, in terms of behind me in terms of age, but like, I'm on the cusp of being like my own version of Johnny FD. The, but you know what, I'm not sure that I'm going to swing the, like the nomadic lifestyle, right? Like, I'm not sure my wife's going to be like, oh, let's go here and here and here. She's all for the traveling, but we better have our home base right back where it is right here. Uh, and then, then, you know, the next stage of life comes along. And so like Johnny's like living the dream that I think that we all like, you know, think about like how cool it would be. He's like that YouTuber that you see like bouncing around uh, Bali and all these other places, like he's doing it. Yeah, so so Johnny, I'd be I'd be curious what your take is. So you got a guy like Scott, maybe a year or two away from being an, an empty nester, and now he's already he's already cracked the passive income code, so he's he doesn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. So he can literally live wherever he wants. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. What would be your argument to his wife to say, okay? Maybe keep that house in Tampa, but here's what life could be like. And here's what's going to be great about it. But here's going to be some challenges. Yeah. And it's definitely not going to be, you know, just completely easy once you make the move. You, you sacrifice something like comfort, right? And, you know, when we have a nice big house that we're used to with all of our stuff, big couch, Netflix, you know, we're ordering food in. Life is very easy and it's very comfortable. And we have a lot of certainty. We have a lot of stability. And that's something that a lot of people value, you know, and I understand why they value it. But at the same time, what are you missing that when you have that much stability is excitement, you know, and this is why most people, when they're working their nine to fives, they have a steady paycheck, steady life. But what are they dreaming about? They dream about going on vacation <laughs> and dreaming about, you know, going out to Thailand or Sri Lanka or to Bali or something. And, but here's the, the thing is, if you just make the move and you just pop over, it's going to be a little bit too chaotic where you're going to start wishing you had that stability again. I think I finally figured out kind of the hack of the two. For me, I try to stay in places for two to three months at a time. I, I like to rent an Airbnb or just a nice, comfortable place. You know, here we have a you know, big, uh, big bed, big natural lighting. We have you know big kitchen and it's just a comfortable place where I don't miss anything from home. You know, I have a TV, I have my Netflix, I have good internet and I, and I have it for two months. And that way I can, you know, if I wanted to, I can go buy some plants and, you know, really make it homey. And, and it kind of solves that part. Uh, and a lot of people forget that when you, like when you're calculating your, the, the, how much money you need to survive and to be able to travel, but you're still paying either a mortgage back home paying your HOAs, you're paying your fixed you know, costs and utilities, it ends up being very expensive. But if you, you know, rent out your place or if you just you know, sell the place or turn it into investment property 
And you know, now instead of paying $2,000 a month for your rent or your mortgage, imagine if you have $2,000 coming in from that, that basically covers your entire trip somewhere else. And you know, this has really been demonstrated by a lot of people who've uh, been part of the FIRE movement, the, the financial independence retire early movement, where they say that if they had known how cheap it is to live in places like Thailand, they could have retired five years earlier and, and had their you know, FI number, their financial independent number, instead of ha- having it you know, be 1.5 million, which takes a long time to save up to, you, or you know, needing to get their passive income level up to you know, $7,000 a month or $5,000 a month, if they had just calculated the lower cost of living in, in other amazing places like Thailand or here in Sri Lanka, they could have left a lot earlier and had their youth and their energy to be able to enjoy this. And that's something that's really intangible that people don't, people don't realize. I love it. I love it. So, okay. Well, Johnny, because this is the art of passive income podcast, <laughs> um, you've got 14 different passive income streams. You talked about Amazon FBA, you talked about Kindle eBooks. I want to know if you only could choose three, which three are the most lucrative? And if you were, if for our listeners right now, as of this recording, if somebody was going to start really building passive income, what would you recommend to them? So the, all the best ones, uh, you know, from, from my point of view, the ones that are the most lucrative, but also the most hands-off, the most stable, those are all investments because when you invest in something and that's paying you a monthly dividend or interest or payment money, you just continues to make money. You know, like, you know, your you, money never needs to take a vacation. Money never needs to have a, a sick day, you know, money like ne- never has to work overtime. No, you know, and you know, for me, my favorite investments are all the real estate funds, the index funds I have, you know, pretty much anything that, is money that makes money. Um, but the, the problem is for, for a lot of people is to get to that point of having enough investments to be able to pay you, uh, start paying you. And you know, that's why when I started, you know, it, I didn't have any money to invest. So I started building you know, uh, e-commerce websites. I was drop shipping and I would spend, you know, I would spend $30 to build a website, another hundred bucks to, you know, uh, make a nice logo, some graphics and then just, you know, manual labor of just uploading products and, you know, and just selling things online. And after a year of doing that and, you know, making a couple thousand dollars a month, I was able to sell that business for 60 grand. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. You know, I have never made 60 grand a a year in my life. You know, I wonder if I can do this every year. So I started doing two or three at a time. And not only would I make two or three grand a month in profit from, uh, the profits of the actual e-commerce store, the dropshipping store. But then when I would sell the business at the end of the year, I would have a nice big cash flow as well, which then uh, let me buy these investments. So I would say, you know, depending on, on where everyone is financially right now, if you have the money, go out and invest it and create passive income that way. It's the fastest way, it's the easiest way, it's the most stable. If you don't have any money yet, build something that you can sell or profit from and then use that money to buy investments. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You know, man, I, I think that that's, uh, that, that's I, you know, Mark, my, here's my thought on it. it. It's almost like what we teach, right? Like we, we teach a very similar model, which is you got to go create cash. How do you go create cash? Well, in our business, you can go and wholesale land, right? Like you can go wholesale the land, it creates more cash. What do you do with the cash? So what I did when I got going is I took the cash that I had and I went and I bought properties that I would, would sell on uh, owner financing the terms to create the passive income, right? So like I had one county where, man, I was just flipping. Now, remember when I started, Mark, like I know you remember this, five years ago, there was 33 people in the Facebook group for your community. Today, there's like 3,800, okay? Like a big difference in the world in five years in land investing, but 33 people, and guess what? We didn't talk to each other, right? Like you remember that no mom was the word. We didn't talk about counties. We didn't talk about stuff. So it's not like I was going to go to the, to the uh, people that I was like, I, you know, like other land investors say, Hey, what you want to buy in this County wholesale? Because that would be like bringing competition to me. And we didn't do that. So like, what did you do? You went and you found people that wanted to buy the land cheap out in the retail world. You sold it to them, created some cash and kept on going, right? Like, and that's what I did is I hauled in the cash and junk it. 
chunked it over to create term sales. And that's what Johnny's doing. He's taking one, one stream of income, taking it, buying more, investing more and growing the passive income. I think that's the secret is you've got to be committed to growing that passive income. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Johnny, let's, let's get real here. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing about living overseas, you know, sort of being nomadic? What, what do we really need to look out for? I you know, know you talked about the whole uh, comfort thing, but you have to. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, like, I, I'll tell you what my first thought is. And you yeah, might please. be able to debunk me. So Scott and I were talking about this uh, last week on the round table. And I think it's a big problem in the States is loneliness. So mm -hmm. when I grew up, I knew all my neighbors. And I had all these like instant friends just in my neighborhood. We'd all hang out. My parents didn't know where I was. I knew where to come for dinner. I could go to any neighbor's house at any point in time. They would feed me. They'd take care of me. They would kind of parent me. And, I, and it was like this community. My kids don't have that. I don't even, like, we moved to this house. No one came by and, and introduced themselves. Someone's going to move in my neighborhood. I'm probably not going to go by and introduce myself. I know I won't. It's just, there's like, we're like siloed. And my my question is if i moved to another country will that problem continue or will that problem maybe be solved i don't know you know logically it would it should be harder you know because if you can't meet you know your neighbors in your own city you know you speak the same language you know you live next to each other why would it be any easier in a foreign country but for surprisingly, it is. And I think it's because back home, first of all, everyone, we're all so busy, you know, like, you know, we, we, we commute to work, we're working all day, then we have bills to pay, we have errands to run on weekends. We don't have time for anyone else. You know, we have time for our friends that we, we just, have, you know, have known for, for years, our coworkers, and that's it. You're not really going out to meet anyone. But when you're part of this community, you know, whether you're a digital nomad and you're traveling and working, like I am, you know, uh, you are constantly wanting to meet other new friends to travel with, to, you know, to learn from, to share ideas, to hang out with, and just do all these interesting things. Uh, so a good hack for this is to go to conferences for other people who have shared interests. So, you know, there's uh, another community of people who travel and uh, world, worldwide, they're called polyglots, people who learn multiple languages. You know, if, if you want to meet someone who speaks six languages like you do, or is interested in learning, you know, six languages, go to a polyglot uh, conference. If you're a digital nomad, we have the Nomad Summit. It's a big conference that we do twice a year, once in Thailand and once in another country, whether it's Mexico or Georgia. And what's really cool is we just had our last one in Chiang Mai, Thailand about a month ago. And 300 people came. So it was a ton of fun. You know, you meet all these other like-minded people who are excited to, you know, meet each other, excited to, you know, go out to dinner and have meetups because everyone's kind of that same boat. But then what we do is you continue to travel with them. So I just wrote in the, you know, in the Facebook group of the event, I said, Hey, I'm going to Sri Lanka to surf for two months. Does anyone want to join? And at first, you know, we had one or two people kind of interested now we have 80 people in that Facebook group who want to come. And there was about 15 of us here already. And, you know, we're meeting up, we're co-working together in cafes. So we don't have that loneliness. We're going out to dinner, you know, once or twice a week. And then over the weekends, we go on little trips. So last weekend we actually rented safari Jeeps. I kid you not. I mean, and we took a day safari and saw you know, all these amazing animals. And it was almost like a mini Africa trip. Like who, I, we didn't even know that Sri Lanka had, you know, like hyenas and like, um, water, you know, these water buffaloes and peacocks and, you know, like all, all these amazing creatures. Yeah, incredible. But okay, so so that's not an issue. But is there anything else that we should be aware of that, that just, you know, sort of intrinsically is going to be very hard? You know, I'll I, I tell you, the, the, the thing I've been stressing out the most about uh, today was that there's no Popeye's chicken here. <laughs> I was, you know, like the food here is amazing. But, you know, you sometimes you miss the comforts of home, right? You miss, you know, you miss the one, the one click Amazon uh, ordering where you get something the next day in the mail. You know, you miss being able to walk down to, 
Target to Walmart and just buy whatever you want. The nice thing about it is it really forces you to ask yourself, what do you really need? And what I've realized is we don't need that much. I've been traveling with carry-on only luggage for the last year and basically just living out of a small, you know, 60 liter bag. And I'm way happier now than I was when I had a big house in LA. I had three cars at one point, you know, I had a house full of stuff and I was buying things in the mail, you know, every day, really just to try to fill voids in my life. I really, really believe that having less responsibility, less things, having more time and more freedom to be able to do what you love doing, whether it's learning how to surf like I'm doing now, you know, scuba diving, uh, you know, learning languages, traveling, like that's, I think that's what happiness is, is just learning, growing and doing the things we want to do and not being forced to, you know, pay ridiculous high rents and, you know, and prices, you know, you know, gas bills, you know, going out to eat here. I mean, I'm literally eating out every single meal, you know, uh, three meals a day. I'm, you know, I, I never do my own laundry. I just drop it off. We have a house cleaner come, you know, clean the room because we're basically living in a hotel. I have no responsibilities and our costs of living are ridiculously low. I'm paying $500 a month to live on the beach with a house cleaner. Like you just can't do that back home. Scott Todd, I think uh, we're joining the digital nomad group. And uh, I tell you what, I think it'd be fun to watch you fight Johnny FD in Muay Thai. <laughs> Uh, look, look, that would be. That I know would, I'm not be, going to. That probably would be funny, but uh, you know, Mark, like 500 bucks, man. Like, I think we could have it all. I think we could have Johnny's life and our lives for 500 bucks. Jeez. I, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing any downside here. I think what's going to be hard is selling the wives. Um, so, yeah, Johnny, are you are you married? No, um, but yeah, uh, I was close, but uh, never got to that point. <laughs> okay, so you're 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 just traveling on your own. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mostly travel uh, solo. Uh, I happened. I actually just started dating someone a few weeks ago, and we were actually sharing the place here in uh, Sri Lanka together. So actually, our my my cost is only two two hundred fifty bucks a month now for the place. Yeah, see, it's, it's guy. I know he was saying he was saying we. So yeah. yeah. Okay, now, so let's just now Mark. Now Mark, he Johnny brings up a good point, right? Like he, there's something that he's he's talking about that he's kind of hitting. He's hit it a few times, but I want to I want to reemphasize it. You see, it's not really about the size of the passive income, right? Like everybody wants to think, oh man, I got a hundred grand of passive income a month coming in, and that's cool. That's a great number to have. I mean, Johnny would love that number too. I mean, maybe Johnny's is higher than that. I don't really know, but uh, I don't think I don't think it was. I looked at a report, but essentially, the thing is, is that it's not it's not about the revenue coming in. It really is not about the revenue coming in. It's the expenses, right? You know. So, Mark, we've seen people that follow our model that you know that they're they keep their expensive to expenses to a minimum, and by doing so, it's the passive income that allows them the freedom to do whatever the heck they want to do and be where they want to be independent location, independent or in a location, right? Like it's not about, it's not about the big house. It's not about the big stuff. It's about get the expenses. And man, look, if, if your living expenses are, you know, like let's just say that Johnny's living expenses, you just said was 500 for two people, I guess. If, if you're looking at a third of that for your revenue, you could live on $1,500 of income coming in the door if your expenses are right. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I love, I love this as a, as a, as an academic fear setting exercise in the sense I, and I've talked about this before where, you know, we can take big risks because worst case scenario, I've already figured out how to be homeless, but what I could do, I think is actually edit that and just really just email Johnny and be like, okay, Johnny, you know, how do I reset all this? And he'd be like, okay, move here. You're only going to, you know, here's your startup costs. He, he could show me like exactly how I could live on a thousand dollars a month, like, like a king. Like before I was going to go to Newport beach and just live on the beach and then, you know, do all that. But I think this might be better is going overseas. You know, what's funny is I used to live. You need a ticket, uh, a one-way ticket. I can get yeah. you one. <laughs> I used you. to actually live near Newport beach. Uh, and my, my rent was, 
I think I was spending well over a thousand dollars a month to share a place with two other people. My life is way better here. You know, the, the, the water is warm. I never have to wear a wetsuit. You know, it's, there's no, there's no traffic. I'm taking taxis every day. Cause it's literally a dollar, a dollar 50 per ride. I'm eating on every meal. And that just things I couldn't do when I was living in California, it was just too expensive. Uh, not to mention all the tax savings from being on here. But what, I, what I wanted to touch on, uh, was, was what Scott had said is it doesn't matter how much money is coming in. It's how much is left over after all your expenses. And a lot of people think, you know, if I'm not making, you know, a hundred grand or 200 grand a year, that that's not enough to, to live. And it's not if you're spending a hundred grand or 150 grand a year. But for, for me, I was, you know, on a path of, you know, earning, you know, uh, over six figures, but my expenses were high and I just like, I had nothing left over. I mean, my goal was to try to save $200 a month when I was living in California. And that was hard. Most months I, I just wouldn't do it. Now, uh, you know, every single month I, on my blog, I put a you know, expenses and income report and just kind of show people how much it costs to live in each, each place, how much I'm spending on, on rent and food and all that. And I remember the last two months in Chiang Mai, Thailand, I spent $860 in total, but that's rent, utilities, food, eating out, gym, getting massages. And I was still making, you know, four or $5,000 a month in passive income. So not only did I had enough to live and continue, I gave my parents a thousand dollars to help with their retirement. I paid their property tax last month, just as a Christmas gift. And these are things that I just wouldn't be able to do if I was living an expensive life in Newport beach or even in, you know, uh, what whatever the beach in Houston would be. I, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sold. Scott, are you sold? Listen, man, I, if I can figure out how to fly my plane over there, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could Airbnb the plane. I could, I could. Good. Don't worry about or, it. Or I could just take the long way route, like, you know, up Alaska, around Russia, come back down again. I could get there. You could do that. You All right. Do. Well, Johnny, this has been phenomenal. Um, and I want to just thank you so much for taking the time in Sri Lanka. I don't, what time is it there? It's like late. Yeah, it's, it's about 10 p.m. now. 10 p.m. So you stayed up late for us. I really appreciate it. Um, your mentorship on how to live this amazing lifestyle has been invaluable. But now we're going to ask you for one more tip a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? I would say watch all the recorded videos of the Nomad Summit, the conference where we had experts talk about this. So it's not just just my talk. It's me and six others. Uh, go to nomadsummit.com, sign up for the email list, and all the talks will be sent out completely for free. And we would love to see you guys at the next live event because I, I really think that when you when you when you get your butt there, whether it's Thailand or Georgia or Mexico, and you actually experience it, you meet other people who have been doing it, it really is it becomes real and you, you know, you talk to people and you're like, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it as well. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I want to keep everybody focused. I want everybody staying focused on, on the task at hand. So check out this Chrome plugin called bait block, bait block. And basically what it will do is it will block the daily distractions. You know, it will block those things that, that uh, you don't want in your life, but, Here's the cool thing. You know what TLDR means, right? Too long, don't read. So essentially, before you click out on a link, you can hover over it and it will tell you what's there. So you don't have to go click the link to see. You just can skim over it. Gives you link previews. Highly recommended. All right, I love it. Well, my tip of the week is have Johnny FD be your digital nomad mentor. And just go to johnnyfd.com and follow the journey of this amazing location independent entrepreneur. Um, he's got his books in there, he's got resources, uh, he'll coach you, it's amazing. So check it out, johnnyfd.com. Johnny FD, are we good? It's good, it's been fun. Uh, I'll be getting some sleep so I can go surf in the morning. I hope you guys enjoying yourselves wherever you are and thanks for having me on. Thank you, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. I want to thank the listeners and just remind them today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call to 
find out how in 16 weeks we can literally transform your life and start earning that passive income. Also, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Johnny FD is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit as well as the latest wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. All right, let's do this, Scott. One, two, three. Let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. (laughs) Not bad. Thanks, everybody.